Uh, we're going to go through the solutions for our uh, KSP problems that include rice boxes. They also include these two vocabulary words, our molar solubility in moles per liter, and solubility, which is a similar but different term, uh, and that's measured in grams per liter. <clears throat> All right, so this is going to require careful reading, so I've got uh, some highlighters here to help us with that process. And we're going to see if we can uh, work through these questions. All right. So we'll start with question one. Oh, you know what I'm going to need? I'm going to need a data package, aren't I? Oh, there's one. Great. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, what do we have? Oh, we'll right. Our, so this is our self-test for uh, saturation. And you know what? I think I cut and paste that title and didn't actually adjust the title. So self-test for our KSPs and rice box questions. All right. So question one. So question one asks us to find the concentration of zinc ions in a saturated zinc sulfide solution. So we got zinc sulfide and it's at 25 degrees Celsius. Alright, so let's see what we can do here. Uh, okay, um, so the first thing I like to do is uh, draw a diagram, I think, and I encourage you all to take some time to do this. Maybe not with every question, but from time to time, check in to make sure you can kind of draw some sort of relevant picture here. So I have some solution, and originally some amount of zinc sulfide was added, and that was solid, and then eventually enough, so this is unsaturated, water, and eventually enough zinc and sulfide ions started separating and floating around in the solution in equal proportion that uh, all the zinc sulfide, uh, well maybe all the zinc sulfide got used up, or maybe there's still some settled at the bottom. We're not actually told. We're told only that the solution is saturated, and we don't actually care if We'll leave a little question mark if there's anything left. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But we know that this solution is saturated. Which means it's full of ions. No more ions can be stored at, say, room temperature uh, of, in this water. And when I say full of ions, what's important to know is that it's, it's only full of zinc and full of sulfide. I could actually add more of different kinds of ions, like sodium ions, so it's not full of those yet, but it's saturated with these types of ions. All right. uh, okay, so that's a diagram. Maybe I can also write what happened here. Uh, I know that I had some solid zinc sulfide originally and that dissociated and it made some zinc ions which are aqueous and uh, some sulfide ions which are also aqueous okay uh, and we want to know about how many what's the concentration that's the required thing right uh, so we're asked what is the concentration of zinc ions. That's what we want to know. How many zinc ions are there? What, what is the number of moles for every liter? How many moles per liter? That's how we're going to measure concentration. There are other ways to measure concentration, like, say, grams per liter or percentage parts per million, 
parts per billion. There's all sorts of different ways to measure concentration, and we in this class like to focus on moles per liter. Uh, just to help us all be on the same page. Okay, so what we got here, this is a dissociation reaction, right? Just in case we didn't notice, this is describing the dissociating of solid zinc sulfide into ionic zinc sulfide. And we want to know something about a saturated solution. And saturated means equilibrium. So a saturated solution is at equilibrium, meaning there's an equal number of zinc sulfide ions combining to form zinc sulfide, as there are zinc sulfide solid compounds making zinc sulfide ions. These are at in equal rates. Those are our two key ideas here about equilibrium, which means this must not be equilibrium, but some initial condition. And uh, when we're comparing an initial condition to an equilibrium or saturated condition, we know we need a rice so I'm going to write R here, and I'm going to let this be my first step in my rice box. All right. And we're going to write the concentrations of our zinc sulfide, our zinc ions, and our sulfide ions in, in the initial con condition here. That's what I stands for, initial. Um, however, okay, we have some zinc sulfide originally that's solid, but it's solid, and so we don't say it has a concentration. There's no uh, number of moles per every liter. It's, uh, it's got a density, but um, we don't really express solids or even pure liquids in terms of concentration. So we just ignore and cross out our zinc sulfide. And that actually is never going to change. Solids don't have any place in a rice box. And so uh, then we say, okay, well, how many zinc ions are there initially in the solution? And initially there are none. None. All of the zinc and all the sulfur atoms are stored in this compound, this zinc sulfide ionic compound, or salt. Now what's going to happen as these guys dissociate? Well, we don't know how many are going to be added, but we know we're going to add an equal number of zinc ions and sulfide ions. And at the end of the day, we're going to have some number of zinc ions and some number of sulfide ions, and it's going to be an equal number, which is what we established earlier in our diagram. There's an equal number of zincs and equal number of sulfurs for every liter. Okay, now our good standards and practices say that after we draw a rice box, we're probably going to want to go to a KEQ expression, but with solubility, rather than a KEQ, we do a KSP. And that's going to be an expression of our zinc ion concentration times by our sulfide ion concentration. All right, uh, now it would seem like we're kind of done here. If we didn't know any other information, we sort of would be. So let's look back at the question. Is there any other information? There isn't, but it does say it's at 25 degrees Celsius, which is a bit of a hint. Because if I look I'm in my data package for any other pieces of information, I can see that I know some solubility products, or KSPs, at 25 degrees Celsius at least. So these have been standardized at 25 degrees Celsius. And uh, so maybe somewhere I would have zinc sulfide. And I look down, I look down, I look down to zinc. Oh, and there we go. We actually know the KSP for zinc sulfide. It's 2 times 10 to the negative 25. So that'll tell us that we have uh, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 25. And that's equal to the concentration of zinc, which we don't know, but we said at equilibrium that it would be x. And it's times by a concentration of sulfide, which is also x. So which is to say that we have 2.0 times 10 to the negative 20, 
5, and that's equal to x squared. But I want to find x, so I'm going to square root both sides. And I'll find x is equal to the square root. Oops. Square root of, uh, put on brackets, 2.0 times 10 to the power of negative 25. And I get 4.5, I guess I should say, because I had two sig figs with the KSP. So 4.5 times 10 to the negative 13. And I can actually say I know the units of this too, because x represented the concentration of zinc ions at equilibrium. So I know this is a concentration. So this tells me that the concentration of zinc ions at equilibrium was 4.5 times 10 to the negative 13 moles per liter. All right. So that answers the question we were asked originally. What's the concentration of zinc? So we know that if we had a liter, you'd have about 4.5 times 10 to the negative 13, which is like 4.5 10 trillionths of a mole or a handful for every one liter, okay, which is a low concentration, a very low concentration. All right, let's move on. Let's see what we got next. So question two asks, we want about the concentration of hydroxide ions. And we also know we have a saturated solution in this case, too. But this time, we have some zinc hydroxide. So zinc again, and now it's zinc hydroxide. Okay. Uh, so let's take a look here. That's question two. Hmm. Uh, where to start? Um, well, we can start with a diagram. I'm going to encourage you to generally do that. So we start with some amount of zinc hydroxide. How do I write zinc hydroxide? Oh, it's given to us. Well, that's also important. Uh, KSP for zinc hydroxide. I mean, maybe we'll need that. Probably will, right? Okay. So we got some zinc hydroxide. Zinc OH2. Can't really see that N. Okay, and that's our initial condition, right? And over time, it's a little clock, we get all of this, or we fill this solution full of zinc ions. We don't know exactly how many, but there's trillions of zinc ions in here. But what's important is for every one zinc ion, there would have been two hydroxide ions in here. And we're not actually sure necessarily if all of the zinc ion hydroxides have been used up or not. That's not particularly relevant. What we know is that this solution is full of zincs and hydroxides. And so this is saturated, which means it's at equilibrium. OK. What we also described here is a dissociation reaction. We saw some solid zinc hydroxide turn into ionic zinc ions and hydroxide ions. I said ionic. I should have said aqueous. Obviously, ions are ionic. So I'm going to write the dissociation reaction. So we've got zinc hydroxide as a solid. And you know what? I'm going to draw again. I screwed up there. Zinc, hydroxide. There are two hydroxides for every zinc. That's a solid. 
that gives us some zinc ions plus two hydroxide ions. And that's aqueous, and these are aqueous, because they're ions, right? Okay. Uh, now, we're asked, what are we asked again? Let's go back to the question. We're asked about the concentration of hydroxide ions. So we're asked, what is the concentration of hydroxide in this solution? SOL apostrophe N is the uh, abbreviation for solution. Uh, and we want that in units, and those units should be in molarity, or moles per liter. All right. So if we want to answer a question about equilibrium, uh, we're going to start by, we're going to draw a little rice box to help us here. All right, and again, just like the last one, we know solids don't have concentrations to speak of. That's not really how we think of solids. I mean, you can think of solids in that way, uh, but I would say typically we don't, and there are pretty good reasons for not doing so. So what about in the initial condition? How many zinc ions are there? We look over at initial, and it looks like there's no zinc ions to begin with. So we're going to answer there's zero to begin with. Yeah, thank you. That'd be, oh, absolutely, that'd be great, thank you. And there's also zero hydroxides, as you notice, as well. Now, as we move on to the equilibrium condition, we're not sure how many hydroxides are created or how many zincs, but we know there's some amount of zincs. And we also notice when we drew this diagram, there's twice as many hydroxides. And as a result, we have X zincs and 2X hydroxides. Okay. Now, generally speaking, uh, when we write a rice box, rice table, ice box, ice table, whatever you call it, uh, we should always move on to an equilibrium expression. But in this case, it's going to be a KSP expression instead of a KEQ expression. And it's the same thing, really, just another name. And so we should have a concentration of zinc ions multiplied by the concentration of our hydroxide ions. And those guys get squared. And uh, I don't have to look on my solubility product table because we're given the solubility product. KSP for zinc hydroxide is 4.1 times 10 to the negative 17. So we're going to write that right in here, 4.1 times 10 to the negative 17. And that's equal to the concentration of zinc, which is X, times the concentration of hydroxide, which is 2X squared. All right. So uh, that means that we have X times 2X squared, which is becomes 4X squared, 2X times 2X is equal to 2 times 2, or 4. x times x is x squared. Now when these guys get grouped together, we actually get 4.1 times 10 to the negative 17 is equal to 4x cubed. All right, now the first thing we want to do to isolate x is divide by 4 on both sides. And that's equal to x cubed on the right. And 4.1 divided by 4 is like 1.025, I think, right? 4.1 power of negative 17 divided by 4 is 1.025. Oops, a little glare there. Times 10 to the negative 17. So we get 1.025 times 10 to the negative 17 is equal to x cubed. And I'm keeping a few extra sig figs, and sometimes it's good to do that in their intermediate steps. We're always going to round at the end to a small number of sig figs, but I like to keep an extra two. Uh, so I've got four significant figures here. Now, Lastly, we'll do the opposite of cubing, which is cube rooting. We're going to do that to both sides. So we'll cube root this sucker. We've got a cube root button up here. And that gives us 2.17 times 10 to the negative 6, which actually gives us 
to, well, again, I'm not quite done yet, so I'll say 2.17 times 10 to the negative 6 is equal to x. Now, we're not done because we weren't asked what's x. What were we asked? We were asked about the concentration of hydroxide in the solution. Well, did we find the concentration of hydroxide? X was the concentration of zinc. That, we want the concentration of hydroxide, which is 2X. So the concentration of hydroxide ions is equal to 2X, which is equal to 2 times this. So multiply that by 2. And I get 4.34 dot dot dot. And this is my final answer, so I'm actually going to round that to the appropriate number of sig figs, which is 2. 2 because I started with 2 up here. Times 10 to the negative 6. And the units for that concentration is in moles per liter. Alright. And that is our final answer. So, just going to grab some more paper here. All right, we're going to move on to question three here. Don't think we're going to get through all the questions tonight, but we'll see what we can do. All right, question three. So, again, and I really think it's helpful to always start by drawing a diagram. Oh, wait, actually, first we'll start by reading the question carefully. All right. So what is the concentration of cadmium-2 ions? Cadmium-2. So that, to me, says that we're talking about cadmium with a 2 plus charge. And uh, that's what that 2 means. It's a valence of 2. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head of cadmium is a multivalent metal or not. It might always have a valence of two, but I'm gonna write that down anyway, just in case it's not. Uh, all right, uh, and so what do we mean? We have a saturated solution. So saturated to me says equilibrium between the solid and the aqueous form. And we've got this uh, compound, cadmium hydroxide, CdOH. And lastly, we can see we're given the uh, KSP for cadmium hydroxide, and that's going to be probably pretty useful as well. Now, I am going to go through this question a little quicker, and that's because I think we went through question two in a lot of detail, and I think these two questions are very similar. So if you have trouble with this one, uh, Chances are it had to do with like some small detail. If you really didn't know what you're doing, chances are you also didn't know what you were doing with this one because these are pretty much the identical question. Uh, so I, if you had real trouble setting this up, I would suggest you go back to question two. I'm not even going to draw a diagram for question three after all. I'm just going to get cracking on it. So I'm going to start with a uh, dissociation reaction. And it's going to give us cadmium two plus, which is aqueous and two hydroxides, which is also aqueous. All right, and I'm gonna call that the R step in my rice box. And uh, I know that in initial conditions, I won't have any of my ions, but then we're gonna add some amount of cadmium and twice as much hydroxide, and zero plus X is X, zero plus two X is two X. And we're going to move on to write our, our KSP reactions. Our KSP is the concentration of cadmium ions times the concentration of hydroxide ions. And those guys are going to get squared. And we were told our KSP for cadmium hydroxide is 5.3 times 10 to the negative 15. And that's equal to the concentration of cadmium, which is X. We don't know it times the concentration of hydroxide, which is 2x, and we're going to square that sucker. So just like the last one, that's going to give us 4x cubed, and 5.3 times 10 to the negative 15. Now, a lot of the algebra is pretty similar here. We're going to divide by 4 on both sides, 
And we're going to get x cubed is equal to uh, 5.3 to the power of, times 10 to the power of, negative 15. And we're going to divide that by 4. We get 1, 13.25. And again, keeping an extra few sig figs, and we can get rid of them later. Uh, we'll cube root that sucker, so cube root 1.098. Uh, times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to x. And what are we looking for here? We were asked for the concentration of cadmium ions. Concentration. Uh, well, the concentration of cadmium ions is just x, so actually we did find it. So we just need to give a unit to it before we're done. The concentration of cadmium ions is equal to 1 point, the correct number of sig figs should be 2, times 10 to the negative 5 moles for every liter. There we go. All right. So we'll move on now to question number four. Question four looks like it has a real Spartan amount of information. There's not a lot here. We're asked to determine the molar solubility of silver chromate. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze here. <coughs> Pardon me. And uh, we're also told this at 25 degrees Celsius, which is a bit of a hint that we're probably, <coughs> excuse me, gonna need our uh, constants in our data table. Okay, so we don't have very much information here. So we need to know first what molar solubility is. What does that even mean? That means uh, how many moles of Ag2CrO4 need to be added to uh, 1.0 liters of water to make a saturated solution. Okay, that's what molar solubility means. It means it's a, a number of moles or a number of handfuls that we're adding to a liter of water to make a saturated solution. Okay, so I think we should draw a diagram here. So we know that there's some amount of silver chromate, Ag2CrO4, that's going to be added to 1.0 liters of water. That's the initial situation. That's happening initially. Now, as time proceeds, what's different about this situation is we want an, all of that silver chromate is going to get used up and start floating around. So we still have 1.0 liters, but now our ions are all floating, our silvers and our chromates are all floating around. We've got a silver and a silver and a silver, a silver silver. Oh, maybe I should do another silver. I can see. Maybe you can see why. And there are two silvers that will release for every one chromate. So every two silvers, I'm going to draw one chromate. So CrO4 minus is floating around. Oh, this must be two minus. There's a CrO4 two minus, and there should be another CrO4 two minus. But all of this stuff got used up. None of that is left. And the question is, how many moles Ag2CrO4? Or rather, more specifically, how many moles per liter? So we're picturing, imagining adding it to one liter, but really we're asking how many moles would you need to add to a single liter? 
All right. So that's our equilibrium situation because it's saturated. So maybe we should label that this is saturated. All right. So, okay, we've got some stuff. We now know we want to know how many moles of silver chromate you can add to make a totally saturated solution. Now, uh, we know some information about how many moles of silver ions. What am I doing? That's not the charge on silver. Cross it out. X it out. Weirdo. Turn that into a plus and nobody notices. Um, we know that we have a KSP value and a solubility product, and it'll help us find the concentration of these guys. Now, if I know how many ions are in solution, I can figure out how many uh, moles of silver chromate must have been used to make those ions. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start by figuring out what's the concentration of uh, all these guys, or maybe the chromate, it doesn't matter, and then use that to figure out how many moles we must have added using uh, our molar ratios. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the uh, dissociation reaction. Okay, so that means our silver chromate, which is solid, dissociates and creates two silver ions for every chromate ion, which must be a charge of two minus. And these are ions, so I'll write that they're aqueous. Close that bracket. All right. And uh, we want to know something about the equilibrium condition. So we're going to be making a rice box. All right. So we know in the initial condition there were no silver ions and there were no chromate ions floating around in the solution. They were all still in uh, the salt. And that you added two like uh, parts of silver for every one part of chromate. That means you have, at the end of the day, however many chromates you have floating around, you have twice as many silvers, and we have a diagram that represents that exact idea. Okay, uh, we're going to move on to, I guess, after every rice box, we follow it with a KSP expression, because that's just good standards and practices. And then we kind of come to a standstill. Okay, we could put variables in here, but we don't know the KSP, or do we? We look back at the question. We see that we're told that this is at 25 degrees Celsius, which means we can use our solubility products table. And we can try to find silver chromate. And here it is, silver chromate, and we got 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12 is the KSP. That means we have 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12. That's equal to our silver concentration, which is 2x squared, times our chromate concentration, which is x. At this stage, this becomes pretty familiar algebra. Uh, You've probably done a few of these already, so it becomes 4x cubed. So I'm going to just kind of jump straight into it here. I'm going to go through these steps kind of quick. If you're confused about these steps, I might suggest you go back and watch the video for questions 2 and 3, because they're very similar. But I'm not going to be wasting a lot of time explaining what I'm doing here, because I think we're kind of getting used to the idea. Uh, divide by 4, and then uh, we're going to cube root it. So... Oh, wait, no, I do want to actually write my intermediate steps. So I got 2.75 times 10 to the negative 13 is equal to cube of x. Cube root of x cubed is 6.50 times 10 to the negative 5, and that's equal to x. <clears throat> now, what does this mean? This is the concentration of chromate ions. 
equals 6.50 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. Okay, and that's fine. That's not what we were asked. We wanted to know, okay, how many silver chromates did we add? Well, if I look back at our... Uh, so can I make a conclusion about the silver ions then? Concentration? Yeah, I can. There's twice as many for every liter. So it's going to be this number times 2, which is 1.30. But with the right number of sig figs, which I should have indicated here, it's 1.3 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. And that's multiplying this one by 2. All right, and lastly, we need to know what was the concentration of silver chromate put into the solution to give uh, this concentration to begin with. And we can look and we can see the ratio of silver chromates to chromate ions is one to one. So therefore, however many ions are here, times 1 gives us 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5 molar molarity. So that's our answer. That is the molar solubility. I can also say uh, molar solubility of silver chromate is 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5 moles every 1 liter. That helps me think about it. Uh, I, and I think maybe we'll call that question done. Done. That's how many moles you have to add. That's how many moles you have to add for it to all dissolve and make a perfectly saturated solution. The answer was 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5 moles for every 1 liter. So that's like a ten thousandth of a handful, or 6.5 ten thousandths of a handful. Uh, maybe that's hundred thousandths. I'm not sure. I need to think about that more carefully. But I'm not going to. Uh, gosh. All right, so how long is the next question? Is it big or is it small? Because this video can only be so long. Oh, it's long. Uh, okay. Concentration of lead. Moles of lead are present in the liter. Okay, this isn't actually so bad. However, I think maybe we'll start it in another video. All right, so uh, let me know if you guys have any questions about 1 to 4 here.